already have my special guest side by side with me. I'm talking about Keith Asmussen. And yes, everybody, let's just, let's just uh, you know, clarify it once and for all. Pronounce your last name for, for our viewers. Asmussen. Asmussen. Everybody, mm -hmm. and I'm guilty of it too. For years, I said Asmussen. And as I gave you the lowdown before we went live, and as I've told other others on this show in the past, I did clarify with your dad, Steve, uh, once, and he just said, hey, so long as you don't pronounce it with an expletive, it is all good. So, <laughs> so we have clarified, Keith, I just love the angle with having you on as my guest because, I mean, obviously your dad is amazing. He's the most winningest trainer in North America. He broke that record last year, and now it looks like he's less than 200 away from 10,000 North American wins, which yeah, is one, 122, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's counting? Um, I mean, just the just the work ethic that goes into that. But what I also love about the story is your family has been influential in thoroughbreds and quarter horses also uh, for generations. So why don't you tell the story to start us off? Who's your namesake? Oh, most definitely. It's uh, my grandfather, Keith Asmussen. And, you know, that's an incredible horseman through and through is it's insane what he can get a horse to do just like on the end of a lead um originally from south dakota but then they moved down to laredo texas when my father was two um he's a quarter horse jockey and thoroughbred as well for the majority of his years i, I believe he rode more than 40 years oh. and you know retired middle 50s and then went to breaking horses this is and it's had extreme success in that as well and, and tell us about the, the facility where these horses get their uh, early tutelage. Oh, okay. El, uh, El Primero Training Center down Laredo, Texas. It's, it's kind of a bull ring. It's a five furlong racetrack and you know six barns on each side. Huge, spacious. It's, it's a ton of fun. It's where I, I learned to gallop and I don't think I could have had a better teacher. It, you know, when it comes to learning to gallop and stuff, it's also... People can only say so much. The majority yeah. of it comes from the horses. And, you know, it's really, truly a blessing to be able to get to ride some of those horses there because they've had some e. like, <laughs> and some horses come out of there. It's like clips. Well, go ahead, elaborate. Go ahead. Yes. Who, who, who are some of the, okay. I mean, you're still so young. How old are you? I'm 24. I just turned 24. That's crazy. And congratulations because you just got your master's in. Accounting. That's correct. And just you're just, it. yeah, you're, you're, that's, that's awesome. Uh, but as you also said, you, you, for right now are having too much fun galloping horses in the morning uh, for your dad. And uh, so you're the educated gallop boy. I love exactly. it. Exactly. They're, they're going to have a hard time getting rid of me. <laughs> well, you, you did have that stint there or, uh, as a, as a jockey, like a real, you've won races. I won six races, six for 60. <laughs> Well, I, okay. So I have a background in riding, not race horses, but I did ride. I grew up on a thoroughbred farm. So one of the horses that we pulled out of the field to be my show horse was a thoroughbred, but I rode dressage. So, but the fact that what you guys do is insane to me. Any, anybody who can get up on a galloping thoroughbred and up in that perch position for as long as you have to sustain that. And I'm just thinking of all the lactic acid building up in your legs, the, 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 the cramps, <laughs> it amazes me. So the fact that you talked about your grandfather riding for almost 40 years is nuts. Uh, it's, it's kind of insane how big my father and I are considering his parents are, you know, five, five and five, three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So as I told you before we started the show, yeah, your, your grandmother is beautiful. Did she do pageants? Because I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious when I say she looks like a little pageant queen to me. I, I don't believe so, but she, really? she would excel if she did. <laughs> I, I think she would. She's stylish. She's got the sass. I love it. Um, but yeah, so not only are you talking about your grandfather and your father, but then your father's older brother, Cash. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, he's a mega star jockey. In 1979, he was the outstanding apprentice jockey. And then he went off to France. He's he won the arc. I mean, he's he was champion jockey for several years in a row. And um th that's got to be something uh, to be able to globe trot the way he did. I think he's like a grade 1 winner in how many countries? I I don't even know. I don't I don't even think I could tell you. My it's <laughs> He won the first Japan Cup. I just like thinking of that blows my mind. 
Uh, I know I was reading this article and it actually made me laugh because the whoever was conducting the interview had mentioned something along the lines of, but you never wrote in the Middle East. And he said, well, that's okay because my older brother or my younger brother, Steve, went over there and, and won the World Cup. So yeah, you know, you guys have struck there too, the family. But yeah. so what is it? Yeah, oh, sorry, okay, go oh, ahead. I was just going to say incredibly blessed, grow up yeah. around horsemen of that caliber. It's like kind of when I started riding is, you would have a question and you'd start asking it and they would know what question you're asked. Like you're going to ask before you even say it. They're, they're just understanding is so, it's so thorough. Like I, I can't even yeah, well, can't I get ahead of them. They just understand. They're fluent in the language of horsemanship, undoubtedly. So for you and your brothers, uh, what was it like growing up in the horse culture and not just with people who are successful in the business, but people who are, mega successful in the industry and actually putting out horses that not only win grade one races, but horses who go on to become grade one champion sires. Um, definitely a teamwork atmosphere and everyone kind of feels the same thing because everyone knows what's at stake, what work has gone into it. And admittedly, it's kind of like a volatile emotional environment but it's it's so together that i it's i feel like synergetic. it's uh, invigorating synergetic, everyone yeah. knows they're on the same team oh, you know so everyone wants it so bad for each other do you know where the where it started with because you can always tell an asmus and horse always the braids the the bright white bridal i w do you know the origin of that the braids come from my grandmother because she used to braid her horses and dad continued that. Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. I mean, right. Don't, don't you feel that even when they're walking up without having, you know, whether it's the windshield silks up or you can tell your horses, no? You can tell. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Abby, go keep. <laughs> You're getting applause. Um, so yeah, no, especially. So what has it been like for you since you just... I mean, that's the thing that's funny, too, that I you talked about going in and, and riding and you had that great win aboard Superstock who, yeah, I mean, owned in part by your by your grandfather, your father trains, you rode to victory. I That, that had to be, um, I'm going to use the cliche word, I'm sorry, surreal. No, without a doubt. And I mean, the story behind that horse is insane just because of COVID. Oh, uh, he's how is that for you? You're so young, too. So, yeah, take us through that. I used to uh, by my grandfather at Keeneland September with his longtime partner, Irv Volzi, with the intention of, you know, pin hooking him for an in-training sale in Texas. COVID canceled the in-training sale and he ended up, they ended up keeping him and putting him in training at Lone Star. And, you know, just, I had gotten out of Austin because classes went online. I went to Gallup for Darren Fleming and absolutely loved the horse. But at the same time, I was also thinking of riding. And so I was, you know, constantly in his ear. I was like, you know, when I start riding races. You really need to put me on this horse. This horse is legit. And <laughs> lo and behold. <laughs> wow. That's all. I can't even imagine. I re still remember uh, just just the, the buzz, you know, having this horse be, uh, you know, as much as as much as a horse could be really a, a family effort that you still had your name there, you know, the as must name there in the ownership slot as well. Um, so I can only imagine what it was like. Do you, how did you celebrate after that? I mean, you have to keep weight, right? So, and you're already so tall. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> yeah, the virtual meatloaf. Yeah. The um, virtual no, it, it, was, it was incredibly profound feelings. I, I remember I, I left the room after that day and I was like, I'm not gonna lie. I was bawling. I, I could oh, not believe man. it. And it was, that's exactly. And it's just like a culmination of so many emotions and to be able to do it for the same people that, you know, taught you everything. I, yeah. I mean, the feelings are so profound. I don't even know how to say it. Oh, it's so endearing. And it's funny because the first, it, as I said to you before we started the show, it's, it's, it's really cool for me to be able to talk to you now because the last time I spoke to you, I think it was back in, I don't know what, I think it was 2017, maybe. What do you remember? What year was that you paid for for TVG? I think it was 2015. It was 2015. It was that long ago. Oh my gosh, right. And so my husband Matt and we had Mike Joyce 
um, doing uh, Paul Laduca at the time. Paul Laduca, I was trying to invest for Paul Laduca. I yeah. had so much fun. It was insane. <laughs> and we did the Whitney walk, and it was so funny. They had you running around trying to like, get things hooked up you know, for the guys to use these different establishments around Saratoga Springs. Did you ever think about going into the media side of that? Or how did you even get into the PA position for, for that summer? I uh, just, just needed a job at the time. I'd reached out to Scott Hazleton and he totally, right. me. he's a man. But as far as media, go, I don't even think I'm well-versed enough to do it. You guys are incredible. No, listen, listen, you've got, you've got that whole legacy from which to draw and, and uh, learn. So if you wanted to, I'm sure you could. Um, and the thing that's so interesting is just to see like just how dynamic you've been working, like just doing the exact for the example, again, the production assistant uh, role and then going on, like I said, riding horses. I, it takes a lot of uh, intestinal fortitude to be able to get up on a racehorse, period. But to go into an actual gate to race them out and try to get to the wire, the winner, um, props to you. It's funny to me because as you were talking about how your grandparents are, you know, on the more diminutive side, like me, um, your dad and you are just really tall. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this, I saw that he tried to, to, to go into uh, being a jockey for a little while. And I, I, I can't even picture it. Oh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Cause he, it, he was a little taller than me and he shot up really fast. I think by the time he's 16, he's six foot. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I have to ask this question before we get into talking about the horses more in depth. Who has the best hair in the family? Oof. <laughs> That's a tough one. I don't know. Darren can rock a really good mullet, but when Eric grows it out, it's it's like <laughs> Trevor Lawrence wavy. It's it's really nice. Did you guys you tell me you had to have clown on your dad when they did the whole like L'Oreal or Herbal Essences stuff with his picture? You've seen that picture of his hair flowing in the wind, yeah, right? Yeah, the romantic novel cover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I told Didn't they edit him onto one of those? Yeah, it, it looked like he fit right in. It was weird. You should get it framed. Oh my gosh, there you go. Steve, don't let your dad watch this. That's what you do. You get hit, you get it like made big and you get it legit framed. Christmas time, boom, you've got your present done. <laughs> it's all set. It's a good idea. I don't think I'm gonna follow through with that. I don't think oh, that'll be well received. No, okay. Well, we could try. Um, and it would have been even better filmed. But all right, so let's talk about some more serious things now. Um, what ha was it like for you, again, going back to growing up in this family and seeing some of the best horses um, in racing historically come through that barn? I mean, I'm talking about the likes of Curlin. We're talking about Rachel Alexandra. I know you would have been very young, but do you have recollections of that ride? I do, but also the most meaningful memories as far as, you know, being around the barn come from just, I mean, kind of just Lone Star where I was yeah. started. I was, you know, hot walked when I was like 14, 15. Then I started grooming horses and, you know, it's just like a natural progression. I started galloping after that. I, I started galloping later when I was 16 and I. Was your mom cool like that? Being around Curlin and Rachel, I, uh, I mean, I, I remember the races. I remember being around them the brief stints I were. But as far as like my memories come, I remember, you know, I, I groomed the meanest horse in the world at Saratoga. Like when I was 15, he was uh, <sighs> Oldwick. And then I, I groomed Escalate and a couple others and they were just so sweet. I just like Aww. lay with them and everything. And I just remember Oldwick just being like, he would have me dolphin diving out of the stall, like chasing me around. Liz. And those are kind of the most meaningful yeah. memories that I have working yeah. around the barn as far as being younger, you know, I, no doubt about it, like curling to bring a tear to your eye and Rachel's like mythical, but I, gonna... I my most uh, memorative memories, if you want to say that, are, you know, just working with the horses. Oh, I love that. But I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and embarrass my husband now for years. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Alexandra is his favorite female horse. His favorite horse overall is John Henry, but his favorite female horse, Rachel. And for years, his night shirt was that Rachel Alexandra t-shirt. Like, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he he loves her. He loves her. And then it finally got so 
uh, so many holes through it that he finally had to very reluctantly and sadly throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you have an extra racial shirts, I'm sure that Matt Crothers would be very happy to take one off you. Um, so no, I, but I can understand. But I mean, being young, it, there have to be flashes. Did you travel a lot? I mean, did you go over for the Dubai World Cup? Yes, for curling. Do you remember that? I do. It's funny. I, I packed two left shoes. It's one of my, <laughs> one of the big things I remember about it. Cause I was, you know, fourth grade at the time. Oh, wow. Well, they don't have any shortages of malls there. So, I, well, back then they might, the, were, you were able, I'm assuming to get a, a another shoe. No, I just, I just wore the two left shoes. There's two dress shoes. Serious? I remember getting ready for the races. I was like, I did not do this right. <laughs> oh my gosh. You mean you only realized day of that your fancy shoes were, oh man. Yeah, oh, well, incredible well. experiences, you know, curling to be able to take us. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean what he's done for my family is insane. And he's can... Classic winners. Like, I, you get dad to start talking about curling, I'll just start crying. You know, he's. It's, was he surprised by just how he's taken off as a sire? I mean, I just look at, I mean, we'll talk about Clary Airmore here in a moment, but. I mean, not just her, but like, it, it, and I'm just talking about this, this, who we're seeing right now knocking out of the park. I mean, her, her rival, Malatat. No, is, exactly. And I, it, I don't think he's surprised that he ended up that level of a sire because, I mean, you asked dad about curling, he thinks he's like a god. Oh, wow. And I remember his conversations with just Jackson, you know, the amounts yeah. of money they'd get offered by. Judd Mott and Godolphin, and it was like they're intent on bringing him back because they like they truly believe he's a breed changer. Oh my gosh! I know. I and I met him when he uh, many we were on our honeymoon. So I met him back in 2014, uh, and I loved his temperament. On top of it, and here you had this horse of this exceptional ability, and at least the day I met him, I don't know on the day today, but he was just so well mannered. He was a gentleman. I was able to stand underneath him and, and take a picture. And um, he, he was just great. And to have a horse again of that caliber as an athlete, but then also have the mindset of that, just, he knows who he is. He comes, he, he exudes confidence and a confident horse, generally speaking. I mean, there's some you know, exceptions to the rule. They, they, um, they're smart. They, because yeah, they're not constantly worrying about fight or flight. <laughs> so, but just have you seen him uh, out at the stud farm out, out at a um, Zalapa? I have, and it was very yeah. recently, and it was it was very cool, very cool. That that yeah. farm is beyond beautiful. Yeah, no, I I haven't been out there, believe it or not. And I live in Lexington, so I should probably head out at some point, but. Um, he he's just they've got to be over the moon that they're standing curling um right here in the bluegrass and he's yeah. just continually putting out talent i mean talking about going back to talking about malathot real quick and and i know well first of all what was your impression of clariera there i know it's tough when you've got a five horse field uh i'm a mega fan and honestly standing in the paddock i was like getting chills because they're literally the five best older mares in yes. the world not even the country and I, it's just incredible to be around horses like that. I, I get starstruck. I'm like, oh, she, she looked at me. Oh my God. <laughs> like, right. I, I was incredibly confident of Clarier going into the race. I, I, out of all the ones we led over, I thought she was training the best and, you know, circumstances just didn't really go our way, but yeah. you know, she came out of the race in great shape and we're good pointed at the Breeders' Cup. So we'll there you go. Be excited she, about that. Exactly. Because she had already punched her ticket. I actually have a replay here of the Ogden Phipps where, um, let's see here. I'm just going to pull up, make sure I pull up the correct replay. And have you gotten on, I mean, here's another example of that relationship with Stone Street. Um, again, Claire Ayer, daughter of Curlin. Um, let me see here. How, yeah, Here's the thing also, like, how's her temperament? Because Malatat, I happen to meet Malatat in the barn. And you see Malatat here uh, in the in the Shadwell Silks. She's got the number three on her. And we're seeing Clarier just kind of drop back because she she's going to make that closing move. Uh, 
how was her temperament? Because Mal's she, has she's a sweetheart. Yeah. With, her nickname's Claire Bear, and Aww. it's because you know, she's a snuggle bear. She's super nice. But I will say, uh, insane. Mala thought I've I've never seen a horse with a temperament like that, like getting led in the paddock with a pony strap, oh my like just God. hooked to a halt. Oh, like, these mares are incredible, and it's it's impossible not to be just over the moon to get seen run against each other. Uh, yeah, and and it's fun too because here again with them both in this race and then uh, <laughs> in against each other uh, in the personal ensign. It, it, it does create that rivalry. It does make it fun. It makes it something you want to stay tuned. Who's going to get the upper hand next time? And it, I mean, it's just, it is pretty remarkable that they, look at all this ground. They're going to close in. I mean, they went pretty fast up front, obviously here, but um, still these, these, these mares are just so game. Billy's and mares. Uh, Cause I believe is, is Clarier's four still, right? Yes. Okay, so she still gets the affiliate designation. We don't want to age a lady too soon, right? Don't be making that mistake. <laughs> no, exactly. And the other thing I will mention to those who are just watching this, the one difference you will note is that Malath Hot wore blinkers also in the personal ensign. So that was a new, a new thing. What do you find in, in making little uh, equipment tweaks here and there? Have you oh. given any suggestions? I know sometimes jockeys say, hey, let's try this or... Went up. But have you personally, since you do get up on the horses in the morning and gallop? I think that's something that I, I really value is I, I feel like my opinions heard around the barn. I, I you know do feel the need to express what I think when I do think of something. But as far as like tweaks in equipment, they're few and far between. I, it is interesting from the perspective of a handicapper. We, we're looking for like any little thing, like oh, okay. they were running front wraps. Oh, they're you know they're <laughs> they're not wearing them today. I, I do like the blinkers on, but it's usually on cutbacks. So I, I don't think. Yeah. I like <laughs> so, so talking about Clarier again. Um, so, like you said, she came out of the race fine, and all is well there. She had a significant cut on her tongue. Oh, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh. You know, it, should her tongue maybe get caught in the bit? It's just she wear like a snaffle. It, it might have come from the false break. You know, she's fractious behind the gates. Okay. She loaded, rocking back and forth. She false broke, and then after that was, you know, rocking oh. back and forth in the gate. And, you know, it just wasn't her day. No, it's okay. I'm going to give her the tongue excuse. Why not? Why not? Why not? I mean, hey, I want, if I'm wearing my shoes, if I, if that, you know, it starts to rub, my gate's all off. So, like, any little bit of pain is going to throw... You know, so I'll give the horse an excuse for any little bit of pain, potentially throwing her a little bit off her game, yeah. right? So, okay. So let's talk about Jackie's Warriors. Um, he just went out there and it looked like he was going to try to take him all the way. We saw Cody's wish come and, and close in there in the, in the last uh, bit. But you still have to, I would think, be very proud of his performance. Oh, most definitely. It's the... Logical next horse. We're talking about curling at Zalapa. It's yeah, right, yeah. right next door is McLean's Music. Yes. It was I, also Stone Street, which is, you know, it's, I, I can't imagine how my you know father feels, especially Stone Street. You know, it's got to have okay. immense pride in these horses that, you know, are multiple generations of their own. So it's, I know. Jackie's yeah. Warriors, the man through and through. <laughs> Do you know, I have to say, when I first saw him in person in the in the paddock, I he he doesn't look like your typical horse. I mean, forget a thoroughbred. He doesn't look even like your typical horse. He almost he has this air about him that reminds me of the the horses that you would see in a bas relief, like an ancient um, these ancient palaces that still stand. They're bas reliefs of the horses, the the war chargers. Oh yeah, and that's what he looks like to me. And he's even cooler to be around in the morning. Like, Is he? Oh, my gosh. He gobbles his training up. And he, like, oh. incredible. I Like, I literally get starstruck around the barn at work every day. And it, it's, oh it, it's an amazing feeling. And he, he's running fantastic, training fantastic. He's he's a racehorse. And, you know, it's a lot of comments about his, how he ran Saturday. But it's it's insane how fast Cody's Wish ran. Yeah. And he fired. And that story, the story there for Cody's wish is also very, um, I, um, I, I would want to do it justice. So instead of me trying to convey, he, he's named after this wonderful child, make a wish. Um, you can look up the, the story. 
so you can actually get all the details because I, w I feel like I wouldn't do it justice right here off the fly, but it's a, it's a great story. Most but, definitely. Yeah. So An I, incredible horse. I like, I can't get over how amazing he ran. I remember when he walked in, I was like, dang, that's a big sexy <laughs> Berlin. And I, I, it's, it's hard to catch Jackie's warrior because he fired and that like, that's one of his, it's gotta be his best seven eights number by far but you know like run the last three eighths of a mile in 35 seconds like horses physically cannot go faster than that and yeah, it, it's my bog like i you're at a loss of words trying to explain i'm it. sure i i and the, the you know the the robinsons are so the love that they have for this horse is evident and it's always been a pleasure to hear them speak about him and so I did not pull up the replay of the four ago because we want to watch wins, right? So I, I did pull up the grade one Alfred G. Vanderbilt so we can look at this. And how do you guys, do you, if you guys have any, I, I know your your dad's kind of superstitious, right? Oh, very, very. <laughs> See, I'm not at all. He'd probably hate that I have those horseshoes that way right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not superstitious at all, but like, is there, is there a certain routine that he follows before he takes the horses over or a certain way in which you celebrate after the fact? Um, not really. He has his spot and he has a couple of <laughs> like lucky socks and stuff. It used to be the suit, but he'll, he'll cycle through some clothes if they're not lucky. They're washed, so I'm hoping, right? <laughs> so they, they, they get laundered in between, I would hope. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But here's Jackie's Warrior again in the Alfred G. Vanderbilt, and just a really cool horse. And as you said, a son of McLean's music. And has he ever? Has your dad ever spoken to you about what might have been with that horse? I mean, he's a 114 buyer in that one lone debut race. No, it's ask him about him. He'll say he's the fastest horse he's ever seen. Not even just trained. He's the fastest horse he's ever seen. Oh. Being McLean's music. Yeah, I mean, and so like you were saying, it's all the more rewarding to see a son of McLean's music just able to blitz horses the way in which he does. I mean, if you're going to go off one to five, you want to win like a one to five, and he certainly does. He's just a cool horse. I mean, right here, he lost so much ground around that turn. He's still going to kick back on and say, see ya. <laughs> it's, it's really remarkable. Do you remember how you celebrated in particular that night? Or was it just a matter of, okay, cool, we won. Let's go back home, <laughs> get some sleep before we have to get up the next day. Um, I think we went to Morton's, which is like a, a steakhouse yes. at the harness track. That's where we stayed. Matt and I, we stayed at the hotel there in the harness track. So, yeah. And we were supposed to have dinner at Morton's the day we were supposed to get in. But because our flight stranded us, we didn't get in until a day later. <laughs> we had a drive up. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tell me about your Morton story because I didn't get to enjoy it. Oh, no. It's it really good steak. It's a fun okay. place. We usually, I mean, we usually cheap out and just eat at home or whatever. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. my gosh. If I want a grade one, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't I, know. I don't want... we're, a lot of, we're a lot of homebodies. So it's... <laughs> I love it. I do love it. Okay. Oh, Stuart says, how great is that to get starstruck every morning? Says a lot about him and you keep so cool. Yeah, I, I, it's got to be crazy started. you walk down that shed row. Unbelievable. And the horses I get on just, I, I can't imagine doing anything else right now. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it is really, really cool. And we're going to talk about a horse that you got on and you were kind of like blown away but before we get to him um let's talk about uh, i i know i should have maybe brought this up sooner when we were talking about the stallions and whatnot but i just felt like we're talking about curlin it fit well to go in and talk about clary at that point but let's talk about gunrunner because obviously you're old enough at that point to really appreciate just the campaign this horse had insane 2017's horse of the year he, I don't know. I was talking to your dad. He was just talking about the fact that to see his progeny come out and have as much success as they're having, like straight out of the gate, even, even took him aback. Oh, without a doubt. Cause it's, 
I remember his his freshman year, we were like, we have a lot of gun runners. Hope it turns out all right. And it's yeah. now it's like we can't have enough. <laughs> I know, right? So I, I mean, I've got a replay here that we can watch uh, on the side, of course, of the Breeders' Cup Classic, as this is a Breeders' Cup show. Only makes sense. Um, but but just what a horse. The the I anytime I talk about this horse. The thing that struck me about him is the way in which he moves. When you watch him at a walk, he's got this. I, I don't know if there, there might be a horse who has an understep as impressive, but there's no horse that has a more impressive understep than this one. Just the range of motion, like a panther. Um, it's, it's incredible because he like he travels candy radish with like low head, but his hind end gets so far under him. It's like yeah. it's incredible the ground he covers. It's nuts. And I, I mean, I don't know if there's walking video anywhere out there of, of Gunrunner, but if there is, people go find it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because I remember being in the paddock at Saratoga ahead of the Whitney and I saw him walking around the tree. <laughs> he looked like he was stalking prey. <laughs> uh, but that was that was an incredible story right there with the rabbit losing the shoe and it landed in his tail. Exactly. And I asked your dad, and he said he had that shadow box and hung up in the house. At the house in Arlington, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he also made a great joke. He said he's um, he he's never had a horse win with five shoes before, <laughs> or something along those lines. I can't I can't hit the punchline as well as he does. Um, but just this horse. Again, what he strung together in his career, what what, were the, what what are the earnings? Over 15 million? It's something insane like that. Let me see to make sure exactly of the number. But but what was this ride for you personally like? Um I, I just, really just shy of 16 million. Not to interrupt. Was... <laughs> it was just shy of 16. Okay, now 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 hit us with your story. Oh yeah. Well, I, I don't think I really recognized him after his maiden, but his his other than uh Keeneland, and I was asking Scott about this horse. He was like, Key, this horse is legit. Like I, I really, really like this horse. This is a derby horse by like no question about it. And then I'd I'd gone to the Risen Star in the Louisiana Derby and watched him win both of those. Oh, Sorry, I removed the wrong thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, to, it's, to be able to follow a horse like that from those early stages and watch him progress and to string together like an incredible campaign. I mean, for connections that your family members, it's it's unbelievable to see the work they put in, the meticulous craft that they have. It's beyond rewarding. Well, that role that he went on, I mean, after that runner-up performance in the Dubai World Cup to Arrogate, who put in one of the freakiest performances. I mean, it took a freaky performance to to, to win that day. Um, but he, he Gunrunner never lost again. The Stephen Foster, the Whitney, the Woodward, the Breeders' Cup Classic, the Pegasus World Cup. Did, did any of you ever have... Like, it's like yeah. after the Clark, and then it was uh, when he like turned four, he started back, I think, it was the, the Razorback at yeah. Oaklawn. Yes. I, I was there and it was like, oh snap, this horse is going to fly. Like <laughs> <laughs> did you bring the right shoes that time? I did bring the right shoes that time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I he really I that's just a horse that I haven't gotten up close personal with yet. I would love to actually go see him over there at three chimneys because um what he's doing, he he is breaking records as a sire already. I mean we're talking about I mean, Echo Zulu, your Echo Zulu, a champion two-year-old filly, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. How is she doing, by the way? Fantastic. She's trains here at Saratoga. I walk by her every day, and she's got the most adorable face ever. It's funny. Oh. She uh, <laughs> she bit my, my youngest brother pretty hard the other day. He's got, like, drew blood and everything on his oh, shoulder. Because no. you don't think it. She's too cute. Oh my gosh. Well, they can all be sassy at any given time. That's the one thing, but no, that's so she obviously that devastating turn of foot. Um, what, do you know what's next for her in particular or? I do not. Okay. Well, she's just doing well. Do you get on her at all yourself? I do not. No. You do not. Wilson does. Wilson oh. Fabian. And he... What's the coolest horse other than the one we'll, we'll, we'll talk about soon uh, that you've been aboard personally? 
Um, as far as like really captivating memories I have of galloping horses, I remember Cabernet was you know, just a, a claimer that my dad had at Lone Star when I was first starting, like when I was 16. He was just like the coolest horse. Ever. He's smarter than me, so he knew way more. And I was like, he basically taught me. And oh. yes, to remember horses like that and what they meant to you. And I, it's it's hard to forget horses like that. As far as like really good horses I've been on, I, I galloped Matoli one time. I galloped Engage regularly. Who'd go on, like they're, you know, pinnacle sprinters. To be able to get on horses at that physical ability, it's yeah. it, it's unforgettable. Yeah. What, what was it like to see Matoli go out on top in the Breeders' Cup? You can ask for more, right? Unbelievably rewarding. You know, to go out on an explanation, exp, exclamation point is, I, I don't know what else you, you could want. No, I, and I, just that record, 10 for 14. Uh, it, it's just, these horses, I can you speak to the viewers out there who maybe don't understand just how hard, and this is what makes gun runners run, uh, just racking up those wins also just so impressive. I, just how hard it is not only to win a race, but to keep a horse in peak condition where they're continually firing successfully, not just playing a good race, but successfully getting to the winner's circle. It's, I, I think a lot of people don't, don't appreciate it as much as they should. Without a doubt, it's like at the pinnacle of the sport in these grade ones where horses like you have to fire every time because people aren't showing up to volunteer to lose. No. And the perfect example is Jackie's warrior the other day who fired but got, you know, beat by Cody's wish who ran it. I, I, an insane race. So it's like you don't you don't just walk over and their past performances don't mean they get to have a head start. You know, you, you line up and run equal distance and the incredible attention and horsemanship that it takes to get horses to, you know, fire at their absolute best in these races, you know, it's, it's incredibly captivating to watch. And I'm, I'm so spoiled because I'm I just, to be surrounded by, you know, horsemen of this caliber and to be able to learn from them. I, it's, beyond belief to watch. It's, it's really special. I'm sure it is. Um, and what was unbelievably special, okay, fine, Clarier didn't didn't win the first Lanson, and, and yes, Jackie's worry had to settle for second there um, in the forego, but, but, oh, and also, no, I mean, we had Gunite run really well, too. Gunite, I mean, Jack Christopher, right? <laughs> On the topic of gun runner. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Exactly. On the topic of Gunrunner, Gunai put in that gritty second place finish. Of course, Jackie's Warrior, um, who's just been pretty freaky, right? Um, ended up getting the win there in the H. Allen Jerkins Memorial. But you had to, again, been impressed with Gunai's oh, runner up finish. Incredibly underrated for his he, entire life. Like, he won the hopeful at 11. He's a grade one, one winner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, but yeah. I, I would say that you still had an amazing Travers Day because guess what? You won the Travers. So let's go ahead. <laughs> We're going to watch Epicenter here uh, winning the Midsummer Derby. Uh, and, and again, you know, I should also give a shout out to the fact that this is the relationship also with the Winchell family. Um, going back to talking about, I, I don't know if we talked about during the show itself, but I know we d discussed it ahead of hitting uh, Go Live that your family broke tap it. Oh, most definitely. And it's it's incredible to see the success that they continue to have both with their homebreds and the horses that they buy. Yeah. You know, having bought Epicenter and, you know, Gunite as an example. I remember when I was working at Saratoga, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and Simple Surprise, who's Gunrunner's mother, won a, a stake on the grass here as a yeah. two-year-old. And so it's, it's, it's really incredible to see their success both with their homebreds and purchases well the 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 situation here with epicenters people had expectations this was a, this was most people's derby horse um of course <laughs> they went so fast there at churchill um the fact that he held for second was very uh, much a testament to this horse's 
innate ability. And we have, of course, had that giant long shot who was in this race here, too, talking about Rich Strike, which is also a great story uh, for the connections there. But, okay, do you, I mean, I don't know. You seem pretty okay about just talking about factual things. Was it, was it hard? Did you know watching the Derby? Oh, man, they're going too fast. Um, yeah, knew that <laughs> fastest was the fastest opening half in the history of the Derby. Like, it seemed I think unbelievable. But when they went by the first time, I didn't look at the fractions or whatever. I was like, oh man, he's kind of mid pack, but he's he was awesome pocket spot. So it's hard to complain. Yeah. And his Louisiana Derby was off the pace and he looked comfortable. No one necessarily concerned, but you know, as you see the opening fractions, it's hard not to be. Well, because I mean, how many lengths are we off that? I'm going to look real quick just to verify just how how many lengths. Because when it's that quick and even your even your usual X amount of lengths off, it, you're still taking a toll on it. Um, and I remember I was watching from the the not the infield infield or crazy crazy, but like the those you know where the the fountain is, like right mm -hmm. by where they do. And I'm craning my head to see what the what the what the first quarter went. And I'm like, what is going on? It was yeah, it was 21 and three up front, and he was epicenter was hanging off. Let me see here. Epicenter was hanging off uh, da, 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 early. Almost he was hanging off. Well, okay, he was back at eighth, but yeah, he started to make his move there uh, as we were turning in. So. Gosh, I should have pulled that replay up just to get an idea of what he went through. In there I don't because, think I want to watch that replay. No, we won't watch it. You're right. But it was <laughs> summer is tomorrow. I mean, the horse that went up there and put in the suicidal fractions, he ended up running last. And then I'm just looking here more at the chart here. And the, you, Crown Pride, actually. <laughs> I mean, he did end up finishing 13th, but it wasn't so bad considering that he was like part of you know not hanging that far off how fast they were going so no the thing with this horse getting the the midsummer derby and you get the canoe obviously in the windchill still so that's got to feel very rewarding too and i know that they were joking i was watching the broadcast and i think your dad made a joke about Mr. Winchell going ahead and helping paint the canoe if they oh, want sorry. and then acacia oh, asked him if he'd do it <laughs> To that materialize how excited they were for epicenter especially yeah. get his grade one yeah I, it, it was well that's the thing because you would think this horse had already won a grade one because he's been he, the only race in which he was not, either the winner or the runner-up was the debut mm -hmm. did you guys know he was going to be this special and were you yes. therefore then like whoa well, what happened here on start one i i don't recall was if there was a reason that he finished sixth on debut or was it something like freaky that just, eh, okay, bad start? What? Uh, just kind of a flat performance. His exercise rider, Jonathan Aguilar, he loved him. And honestly, a lot of people at the barn were on the horse in his first start. And uh, it's not a whole lot of excuses. Yeah. And just definitely got a lot out of the first start. And well, yeah, I mean, I would. I thought he was. I would say he he did. I do you is, is this a horse you've ever been aboard yourself? Also, I have not. Oh, do you, I'm just curious, like because I would want to. If I was if I was in your situation, I'd be like, hey, can I take can I can I take Jackie out for a spin? Or you know, I would be that person. I'd be asking. But do you, do you ever ask and get shut down, or do you just not even pursue um, do so? <laughs> sometimes I'll insert myself. I. <laughs> How could you not, right? Come on, know. look at your I barn. I mean, like, like, Scott will be making the sale. I'm like, mm. yeah. No. I, I would be doing it all day, every day. Like a different, a different one of the big, big time horses in the barn. I'd be like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> it was Jackie yesterday. I, I think I'll go ahead and take Clary Air out. Exactly. <laughs> See everybody. <laughs> no, it's. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I respect the. Uh, we have such a team here at Saratoga. The environment's unbelievably professional. And, you know, the, the people we have, like our grooms are incredible. And then our exercise riders, I think like the, who else would you want? They're some of the best you yeah. like in the nation. 
and for them to be getting on the big horses, you see the, how the big horses train under them. It's just yeah. like, it's not something you want to get in the way of. <laughs> no, right. Well, maybe, you know, I, I, I had asked Wesley, because obviously we know Wesley was an Eclipse Apprentice jockey. I mean, he, he can ride, or, you know, at least did. And, you know, for he still helps break horses and, and whatnot. So I asked him, well, have you ever gotten up on Golden Pal? He said, no. And it shocked me because I would at least once, at least before the horses were tired, right? At, at the very least, I'd want to take that horse out for a spin. If I have that backbone where I'm a professional, I've done this professionally, I know what I'm doing, I'm not going to get the horse hurt uh, you know, or anybody else, I would want to do it. But that's <laughs> me. I mean, right? I, I, do you like fast cars? Like a lot of guys? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I remember, <laughs> you know, I, I, a lot of the jockeys, they have like these really like flashy fast cars. The horses aren't just enough. They still have to be able to put the pedal to the metal too. So I would just figure people just how they like to, oh, can I drive your car? I'd love to see that, you know, how fast it goes from zero to whatever. I, I don't know. I just figured it'd be kind of the same for some of you guys there in the barns. We have some comments. No pressure, but Roshan says Epicenter will win the Breeders' Cup Classic, best dirt horse in the country. We all that that's a tough call. We got flight line. Roshan, we got don't be good. No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but what do you think about what he said? He's so excited for the Breeders' Cup, like right? Life is good. Flight line, like are they going to run the classic? Maybe a mile. I don't. Well, I think they're going to go classic. And now, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, obviously from Epicenter, we saw a lot of speed. Either he was the pace or he was like right there. But then um, the Louisiana Derby sat about a length, a length and a half off. Uh, but then we saw the Kentucky Derby because, again, they were going so fast up front. He was about five lengths back early on, five and a half or so. But he did show he can rate because of that, you know, and not get caught up and feeling like I have to go with those other horses. And the same thing here, uh, the same thing with the Jim Dandy hanging off and whatnot. So, so from that point, was there, was from the Derby point, was there a, a concerted effort to show this horse, okay, just relax. You don't need to be right up close. I think his Louisiana Derby probably was the biggest step in that direction. Um, probably the thing to be most, um, proud about was how he ran in the Jim Dandy off a brief layoff. Yeah. You know, being comfortable sitting that far off of it at kind of not that salty of a pace and to be able to see how comfortable he was rating behind horses going, you know, arguably slower. And, yeah. Well, you know, his ability to run when it counts down the stretch. Well, with, with the race being, uh, or with the Breeders' Cup itself being at uh, Keeneland, you know, one of the things – a lot of people tend to say in handicapping is you, you kind of want to be close or not too far off heading into that turn. And he's got that ability, but now we see that he can relax as well to, to not get cooked. We've got horses again, like life is good and flight line in there who have had to overcome adversity, but they also have that, that turn of foot. That's insane. Um, and that's what's enabled them to, to overcome bad breaks and, and other things going awry. But, where do you, when you read a comment like that, do you think, yeah, I, I could throw his name in there as well? I mean, this person says he's going to win. Roshan, Roshan says, best dirt horse. No, without a doubt, I'm a homer. And, you know, Epicenter's incredible. It's, it's hard not to be a fan of his and how he came out of the race. And, I mean, they had to put two people on him walking back from the test bar because he knows he's the man. Like, really? It's it's impossible not to be a massive fan. Oh, being I around love it. like that every day. Well, you have fans too. Let's see here. We got Mabry, Mabry. Hey, Keith. This is Lon Garfield. How many gun runner of gun runners offspring do you guys have in training? I don't even think I could answer that question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the question. No, I'm I'm sorry. I don't know. I some of my favorite horses are. Gun runners, it's like even society. Um, gun runner uh, etiquette that ran. You're right, and won the Charlestown. Oh, oh yeah, like, it's it's incredible. She ran well, seven also, inch, she ran a six rag. This is unbelievable. And I know that I know that Epicenter is not a gun runner. He's a not this time. Shout out to my friend Jason Luch of Allwell Family Stable, and of course Taylor Made Farm. Um, oh, you know. 
but also that bottom side, his dam is by Candy Ride. Candy Ride's the sire of gun runners. So that's kind of fun there, right? I like that. <laughs> I mean, you still got the connection uh, with, with that pedigree. And um, oh, I got to give another shout out to Liam Benson, too, of course. Liam, Liam's awesome. Uh, if y'all know, you know. Uh, so let's see, we got another comment here for you. Danielle, love Epicenter and love the Asmussen family. We love you when you come to parks. <laughs> Us too. Thank All you. right. <laughs> oh, and Marie also wants to know, are you still race riding, Keith? I'm not. I'm just galloping at the moment. That's right. But it, it was an incredible experience. I, I mean, the memories are so intense that they'll never leave me. Oh that you you take nothing for granted I, I think that's phenomenal um before we talk about the two-year-old that captured everybody's attention let's talk about a few of the two-year-olds that you've got entered in this weekend with the fam okay so at kentucky downs and like i said my 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 computer had quit on me but i think it's uh working now um where i can actually pull up <laughs> which races these horses are in. <laughs> but at kentucky downs which is uh, it, obviously the Winchell family, very influential there with Kentucky Downs. Really cool. I've never been. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to be going down there on Friday and Saturday. And uh, we've got that. I'm going to use the word, the undulating turf course. Uh, <laughs> there it's all grass racing. It's pretty neat. Um, and you guys are sending some horses out there. And I'm not going to put you on the spot if you don't know a lot about these particular ones, because I know it's a giant operation. I don't even know how many horses you have in training as a whole. Um, but it, I, I'm sure that it, it's an all hands on deck there with you, yeah, right? Uh, but so let's talk about if you do know, um, we've got Master Song. Master Song, don't know that horse. You don't know it's this. Horse. That's okay. Well, Master Song, just for those who might want to know this horse, I'm making sure I've got the right day when this horse is actually going to debut. Um, because again, my notes that I actually had all set up and ready to go went bye-bye because my laptop decided to quit on me. So, okay, <laughs> on, the, on September 1st, which that is the opening card, uh, race one, Master Song's in with Julian LaFaru. And I think that this horse is a half brother to Nashville. You know Nashville. I do know Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> And this boy just for those. It's funny, I, I can't tell you anything about that horse, but I can tell you about the the starter in the next race. <laughs> I think oh, okay. I, well, I don't tell it comes from Lone Star, and I was getting on him there. Oh, well, there you go. Well, that's in it's the a, race too. You mean? I believe so. Not a two year old, but that's okay. Share with us. So you're talking about don't ask, don't tell. No, exactly. It's it's awesome to be able to get on horses like that and have an opinion. He would just come off a long layoff, ran at Lone Star, ran incredible first off, I second off, but it's. Definitely more salty competition. I think he's, what's he running for? 50? Let's, uh, let me see here. I got to pull it up. And uh, race two. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. We're going to get it up and, and rocking and rolling. Uh, meanwhile, real quick, talking about the first timer again, Master Song, which, by the way, very clever name considering the Stone Street. Um, again, half to Nashville. This one is by Mastery. The dam is Veronique by Mizzen Mass. The grandmother is a sister to Giacomo and a half to Tiago. So you got some pedigree Whoa. there for sure. Um, let's see, why is this not coming up for me? Come up, come up. All right, here we go. Race two, race two, yep, 50 claimer. One mile on the grass, of course. And he is in, don't ask, don't tell, is, if I can find which post he's in. Oh, is he on the also oh, eligibles? Ooh, that. also eligibles. Oh, Post 15 man. in the also eligibles. That's, well, I that's don't know. part about Kentucky Downs. They, everybody wants to run. But it looks like he would, I mean, the, the, the morning, line, uh, morning line odds maker put him in at six to one. So obviously not without a shot. And well, basically, you know, we're getting the lowdown from you too, saying you like the horse. Um, as for Master Song, for those who are curious, again, that is in race one. And he is in post, um, pulling it up here. He's in, he's on, he's on the rail, um, or she's on the rail rather. Or wait, am I losing my mind? No, 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 these, no, these are Phillies. Okay. Master Sam's a Philly, everybody. I'm sorry. I've been calling them he, this is the half sister to Nashville. Okay. No, sorry, I, I can't really help with her, but, um, 
three to one in the morning. Like, well, you can help with this. How hard is it? I mean, we talk about it when we handicap, but as somebody who gets on these horses day in, day out, are we making too much about firsters on the rail? Or is it really something that you guys also sort of groan when you draw it? Um, it offers quite the excuse when you don't break because it is harder, but okay. I mean, well, she's got pedigree, so uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing her debut, Master Sean Post One, Race One on opening day at uh, Kentucky Downs, three to one on the morning line there. I don't I know again. I can speak to Fairchild. Uh, she's been here. She's been training awesome. Wait, where, where, where is she? Which race? I think it's a third. See, I'm a, so like, two I them. focus on the two-year-olds, but you can tell me anything. If we got some good information for the for for the you know, people watching right now who are going to be wagering, by all means, give it to us. Tell us about her. I I think she's a crazy physical. I, I, I think she's really got a shot in there. She's been training exceptional. So I oh. came unprepared. I didn't know you were going to. Don't you worry about it. No, I there. come firing. No, no, it's all good. Fair, well, everybody's going to like Fairchild. It looks like she is seven to five on the morning line there. Post three. And that race is uh, that race is an allowance optional, and uh, a mile and five sixteenths on the turf. Uh, you gotta love the the, the fun the fun uh, distances. A horse that you might know because she's already raced three times. Is she's a shining star, and that filly I think is on the second day of racing at Kentucky Downs. I need to make sure because again, everybody, I apologize. I did have my notes all prepared, but my computer went and decided not to comply with me. But <laughs> that being said, she's raced three times. She's a daughter of Curlin. She's out of Bernina Star by Harlan's Holiday. She's, again, raced three times all in the dirt. She's going to be switching to the turf for the first time. And she's got pedigree, too. I mean, her grandmother's a half-sister to millionaire Grey one winner Eddington, and the family includes a Group 1 winner in Miserden, who won the Criterium de St. Cloud. So you do have some pedigree that can flip. Do you, you, what do you think of surface switches within your barn? Are you, do you guys give a horse a few shots on dirt because you really want to see if this is a horse who could potentially um, be the type who goes on at three to be in the oaks? Or do you just sort of say, okay, well, this isn't working. Let's try turf. A uh, very subject, subjective approach as far as, um, you know, it's tried new when you think there is something to, left to be desired. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think we really have a formula as far as trying horses to different areas. No, I no, definitely. I, oh. but we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Dad usually does a really good job initially placing them. Oh, yeah. As far as like starting from physique and how they train and you know, having an opinion and moving forward from there. No, I. there's a reason he's the most winningest trainer in North America. That is for sure. So She's a Rising Star is going to be in the first race there on Saturday, and uh, she's got Vincent Cheminal aboard, who I'm not familiar with. Who's been riding exceptional. Yeah, he, he help really, me out here. How I feel I feel like I'm, I'm missing out. I wasn't familiar with him either. I, I saw uh, he won the turf stake with All in Sync, who's three-year-old, won a turf sprint against Older at Ellis the other day. Oh, and he, wow. he rides our babies exceptionally well. Really? Okay. A name I'll, I'm going to have to pay more attention to for sure. And then in the fourth race, which is another main special weight, the, the purse is, by the way, insane. 150,000 main special weight races, which is just, I mean, it, it really is, is, is something that's incentivizing people to send the horses they feel have the best shot to take these purses down. So you've got Swiss Guard with Tyler Gaffione, or as I like to say, Tyler Gaffione aboard. <laughs> Because that's how his name is really pronounced, everybody. It is. I asked him. Um, and the, if anybody wonders why I get so on about like name pronunciations, because my main name is Hakeem. Okay, I'm Middle Eastern. My dad's from Iraq. And when people call me Hakim, I'd be like, no, dude, no, Hakeem. <laughs> like, so I have like, I don't know. I don't know if it's like this little chip on my shoulder when people are, are saying others' names wrong that I want to correct it as, uh, as emphatically as I do. But uh, so Swiss Guard, an American pharaoh uh, at a Swiss Alps by Majestic Perfection. Speed and fade on debut, but that was a short five-horse field going five and a half furlongs on the dirt at Saratoga. So now, okay, we're going to go and we're going to try the turf. I think that makes a lot of sense. 
I I like him. Carlos gallops him, but I worked him on the turf with uh, Watch This Money, who's another baby of ours that I will end up running at Kentucky Downs. I thought he handled it plenty decent, but that's just for me looking to the side of me. I was on the Philly. Um, <laughs> Well, there you go. Hey, any insight we can get is great insight. And now we're going to get some very personal insight because let's talk about the two-year-old who made us all go, what just happened? And I'm talking about uh, Echo again. This Colt Gunrunner. All right. Let's see. I'm going to share the screen. Once again, our, our favorite cross, you know, talking about society and yep. Gunrunners out of Tappet Mares. They are. Oh, oh we don't. Hold on a second. Where is it? Where did it go? I just had it. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. I had it all queued up and then it went away on me. Which race are we on here? Oh my gosh. I don't know what I did. I must have clicked something and it. Okay, I'm going to find it again. I will find you. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There. Oh, now I'm getting a phone call. Okay, you know how I'm going to find it? Because we have to show this race. I'm going to stop showing my screen because who knows what will come up on there. It could be something bad. Um, but no, I am determined to find this because of all the replays we've seen, this is the one that's the topical one about a two-year-old because it's the future stars forecast. We talk about two-year-olds on here. And- uh, Well, you look, I guess I could you know, just talk about it. Oh yeah, talk about him for me while I look for this replay time because there was this great quote and I'll let you actually say what you said. Um, there, there was a great quote from you about your impression of this cult that you, you, you just had to tell your dad. Oh, most definitely. I, I had known about him beforehand. He's, you know, broke by my grandfather down at El Primero, as we talked about earlier. My youngest brother, Eric, you know, during the winter time will go and work for him, and you know, he's gets his opinions, makes a little short list for when I, I do go down, and you know, it's like, what do you think of this horse? And he has his list of the ones he likes. And I'm, you know, familiar with the family, his mother being Teardrop, who was, you know, incredibly talented, but, you know, uh, pretty fly, flighty. She, uh, she breathed different <laughs> air than most, you know, if, if you get the chance to, uh, maybe if you can, I, I don't know, pull up the replay of her maiden win at Churchill when she, like, she broke her maiden. I, it's like 2013. I looked it up the other day and it was visually insane. Because you know she yeah. misses like a typical five for a long maiden race at Churchill and it was misses the break, cool. runs up, bolts, <laughs> blows the turn, you know, a little past the half mile, and she is like ten wide, passing horse is it's insane, runs away from him. I the, well, you knew the talent was there. It, it, it's got to be. I mean, just going back to talking about the fact you know, out of a tap at mirror again. You've got that Asmussen influence top and bottom by Gunrutter. Again, you guys started Tap It. Uh, it, it that's just, again, I mean, you've got a horse that's already been a proven super stud for years now on Tap It there on the bottom side and that you have, you, you know, that stamp on. And now Gunrunner, who is even more intimately connected with you guys, just, of course, having contained him. Um, yourselves, it, it, it's got to feel really cool to see the progeny there. And of oh, course, this, what was it in particular that just made you go, wow, when you got on him? I came up to Saratoga, it was like middle of June, late June. And, you know, I'd known about the horse beforehand. And, you know, I pick my grandfather's brain all the time. He's telling me about the ones he likes and ones then um I'm like, Dad, you got to put me on this horse. Come on. <laughs> and, you know, Galvin, he's he's incredibly smooth. And he's like a mass. He's a beautiful, beautiful physical. And he's just like, he just covers ground like it's nothing. It's like you're surfing. He's riding a wave. And it's like incredibly smooth. Hind end under him. He's, he's kind of got a long neck, but he like covers incredible ground. It's like unbelievably smooth. My mom would say... And, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, galloped for a couple of days. It was he's galloping up to his work on the main track to work five eights, and he worked with. Um, I think he worked with Swiss Guard, which is funny. You already brought it up, and it was kind of when the main track was a little deeper, and worked. Like it was a gate work I'd never even thought you could experience, and is worked insane. 
Oh my gosh. I get chills oh, listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it's crazy and we're you know we're jogging back or whatever and Pletcher rolls up on his golf cart and he's like who's that baby by <laughs> like, I don't think we're the only ones that like this horse you know it's, it's unbelievably fun to be a part of a racing stable that brings up horses like that oh, I goodness. worked him and galloped him every day for his next three works you know and you know, couldn't have led him over with more confidence than we did. And, you know, I, I told my father, I was like, you know, this is the best horse I've been on. And I, you know, I meant it, but at the same time, I get so ex exaggerative, I guess, but. Oh, hey. I, and I do like to have an opinion. That's right. And that you've got to trust your gut. And this horse, I mean, he just freaked again by gun runner, damn teardrop stakes place by tap it. Uh, Echo again himself, he's a half to a horse, or a full rather, to a stakes place runner named Costa Terra, and then he's a half to Pneumatic, who you might remember, stakes winner, grade three place. Mom herself, though, teardrop, full sister to a grade three winner named War Echo, uh, as well as a stakes winner, grade one place Farrier, and then she's a three-quarter sister to grade one winning millionaire Pyro. And for those of you who are like, what's three-quarter? Well, it's because uh, teardrop by Taffet, Pyro, her three-quarter brother is by pulpit. Pulpit's the sire of Tappet. Therefore, you've got uh, a three-quarter connection here. Um, but also, she's a three-quarter sister, stakes winner, and multiple grade three place long view drive. So it, that, I mean, you've got the black type in there for sure. Now, let's look at this horse. You talked about uh, an impressive physical. Yes, indeed. I finally keyed it back up to the right spot. Please don't fail me now, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Loading into the gate. Um, and I do love that you said that you, you guys walked over there, which is the utmost confidence. Here he is stunning. And, uh, the part of the reason, if you guys are wondering why I did, uh, not just put it where they break out of the gates, because I wanted to show this horse loading in just what a beautiful specimen. Oh, let me see here. And I don't know that I've seen, has there been another gray gun runner that you can think of? I, I can't think of one. Um, look at Halo's running. Briar. There you go. Yes. Never. Yeah. In the priors. That's right. Wicked Halo. Good job. Here we go. And just the way he broke with alacrity there. Did you guys know at that point when he broke cleanly, it was going to be done? I mean, it, it's a horse race. It's, it, horses prove you wrong all the time, so it's it's hard not to be. I mean, I try my best not to be like arrogantly overconfident or anything. And I, like, admittedly, I feel guilty to feel like I even contributed anything because he's he's just so incredible. I think I think it's fine to know that you you are you are part of the reason that he's getting into that gate with the tools to be able to put in a performance like this i mean what you guys do the dedication of getting up as early as you all have to get up the horsemanship that goes into it not just on their back but on the ground as well uh, is something for which you should certainly um be commended and i totally understand though about not wanting to do it in a prideful manner you know take that take that pat on the back in a prideful manner but uh, i mean just look at this poetic <laughs> or as they say poetry in motion exactly oh he's stretching out like crazy <laughs> it looks like he wants to keep going <laughs> he, he doesn't even look the least bit tired how did he come back to the barn even better than he went in is is scary oh. Oh, gosh okay so what are the next steps um I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to say or if Oh, they okay. Well, if you don't know, you're not supposed to say, we won't say. We can guess of what certain targets may be, but this is certainly a horse. I'm sure that it's safe to say that you're hoping to see uh, Shining Bright come Future Stars Friday. <laughs> exactly. It's funny. He, he came back out of the race even better than he went in. It's unbelievably exciting. I have kind of a funny story. The first day he went back to the racetrack, he just – you know, jog one the opposite direction. Scott had turned me loose on the pony and I'm jogging. He's, 
his mother's <laughs> you know, they, they're so athletic yeah you always have to be watching them right yeah. and then you know on the oklahoma the training track at saratoga we're gal or jogging the wrong way and top of the shoots a gate and he gets into, like he sees it in his it comes to his attention and he props in 180s hard oh, no. and mott is right there and he picks me up on the pony and gets me by the gate he's like man I, I recognize this horse. I wanted to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. Uh, how did you personally feel here? I mean, having been up on him in the morning and now you see him coming back to you, a winner to get his photo taken there at Saratoga. Uh, you know, it's rewarding, but I do want to say, it's like, I feel a little guilty for taking credit. Like he is so incredible. I f he could do it for anyone, you know? Oh, I love how humble you are. Oh my gosh. No, it's fabulous. And you know, in the, the, you guys, I mean, it, it's not really calling an audible. You guys have that long-standing relationship with R Ricardo Santana, but I know it was originally supposed to be Joel Rosario in the irons that day. And I think Joel got sick mm -hmm. um, and couldn't ride for a bit, but uh, you knew he was going to be in capable hands. Most definitely. Oh my goodness. How fun is that? I love it. I, What's his temperament like? Just out of curiosity in the barn. Very alert. You know, he don't, yeah. he don't miss very much. I'll tell you that. He goes oh. to the racetrack with cotton in his ears because he is, he feels good and he's. He gets a little bounce in his step. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I love some of those photos. If you ever catch the, the backside photos when the horses are kind of like doing their thing that horses do and they bounce up in the air and the person's still holding the shank and they look like a giant horse balloon. Yep. That's always fun. Horse but, Horses will do anything at any time. I don't think people understand. And that's part of the reason why I always do try to stress how much work goes into getting these horses, uh, not only to the races, getting the races then successfully in terms of just getting out of the gate, getting back to the barn, but also then when you take it a step further and hoping they win, it's just even a different animal. So uh, for him to do it, do it in the way in which he did it at first asking. He's certainly a horse that we are keeping our eyes on. Um, and I'm hopeful that we will see him uh, back in action uh, it, it very soon so we can continue uh, along this ride and that hopefully leads to capping off the two-year-old season there in the Breeders' Cup TVG Juvenile. Um, we have just a few more comments. Let's see here. Some years ago, I sat with Steve's parents at an event. They were very amiable. Oh, I, again, your parents are awesome. Your parents could have their own show, I think. Oh, I think so too. I, I think they should pitch that. I do. <laughs> I love when your she po your mom posts when it's their anniversary and they have the cake and it's the cutest thing. <laughs> I love it. I love love and the fact that they've been in love with each other. Like I think I read something that he's known her since she was five. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't think that young. Oh no. Okay, then maybe I misread. Maybe it's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case he's known they've known they've been together for i don't know how many years now do you know are you talking about my my parents your or grandparents my grandparents your grandparents oh 60 plus oh wow see that's so awesome i love it and what about your mom by the way i was going to ask you earlier when you told her hey i'm gonna I'm going to start galloping horses and then I, I I'm going to be a jockey. Did she, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. Even if my kids have grown up in a barn, I still would be like, I don't want you getting up on that horse <laughs> doing that. I'm blessed with like the most amazing parents ever. It's yeah. kind of like a, no pressure and they understand, you know, it's, they understand it because I just, they want you to find your own path. I as a parent, like, because it is. I, I broke my back my senior year galloping horses. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. How long and was that? Like, and that was before I was even riding, and there's like still, they understand oh. the risks. They know the desires, and yeah, no, I, I, all, all the, all the spouses and the parents of anybody who's getting out there in the, uh, you know, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon or both, they definitely, you know, that that they're let you know you have to trust that individual to make the right choices for themselves for sure i'm just such a helicopter mom right now i never thought i'd be that type but I, even with my kid if she's going to get 
you know, something out of the pantry. I'm like, oh no, she could pull something down. It hit her on the head. And then, <laughs> so I, like, I would say with riding, they were, they were more concerned with like the reducing. And oh, the weight. Up. Yeah, I know. I couldn't do it for that reason. Although I'm short enough that I might not, I, I might still be able to, no, I mean, because what, what, what is minimum now? Or, or the, or whatever, what's the, what the range right now? I think it's, 118, 124. Oh, I can fit that. I can go. fit that and still eat my my pizza. All right. <laughs> I don't. But I but yeah, again, I, I just don't know. The balance you guys have to sustain and the, the muscle and all that. Uh, that I, I don't I don't like to sweat. So <laughs> I don't think it would be a job for me. Oh my gosh. Let's see here. Stuart talking about stretching, but so comfortable doing it. Lazy dog. He says, woof, woof. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome, lazy dog. And Rashad is it, it, Rashad is like determined here. I mean, not, 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 not conceding an inch. After Epicenter wins the classic, you should call me and say thank you. <laughs> you got to knock on wood for me, Rashad. I mean, you got your hype person here. Like, I... <laughs> Just like, yeah. I, mean, well, I mean, I'll be in the epicenter fan club with you. There you go. I love it. I do. So where, where do we see you next? Where are you based right now? Are you up still in Saratoga with yes, everybody? Okay. And then what do you do? It's kind of funny. Cause I was asking Scott, Bl uh, Scott Blasey, my dad's assistant. I was like, yeah. Yeah, how long are we staying here? How long are we training here? What about Keeneland? Like, He's like, dude, I don't even know. I'll tell you when I find out. <laughs> I, I think most likely I'd go to Churchill from here. Oh, okay. Well, if you do make it over to Keeneland, uh, definitely would love to say hi in person. Uh, it, this has just been an absolute pleasure. And I, I it's, I don't know. There's just something about, about the youngsters in particular. And that's part of, the, again, the reason why I love the angle of today's show, because the next generation uh, of a family here that's already done so much for the sport. I, I hope to see you continue to shine as well as echo again and uh, the rest of the stable there. Keith, I got to thank you so much for your time. Everybody, this has been your future stars forecast on a two year old Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed it because I surely did. I'm a fan. I had a blast. Thank you for having me. I had a blast. I, I'm a fan. So thank you, Keith, for everything. And y'all, I'll be back next Tuesday. Catch me later. <laughs> Bye, everyone.